Hello, I'm Mardianto, a Senior Technical Account Manager at the AWS office in New York City. Today I'm going to show you how to use an MFA token to authenticate access to AWS resources through the AWS command line interface. First, I will show you how to get ARN of the MFA device. Next, I will show you how to use the AWS SDS Get Session Token command to get the temporary credentials. And then, how to call the AWS CLI command with the temporary credentials. Let's get started. It's the best practice to protect your AWS account and its resources by using a multi-factor authentication or MFA device. If you plan to interact with your MFA protected resources using the AWS CLI, then you must create a temporary session. There are three types of MFA devices supported in AWS. Virtual MFA device, FIDO security key, hardware MFA device. AWS CLI supports only MFA authentication with virtual MFA device and hardware MFA device. It's a best practice not to use AWS account root user for everyday tasks, including administrative tasks. Rather, it is a best practice to use AWS identity and access management user with least privileged permission. In this video, I will show you how to authenticate access by using an AWS IAM user. First, let's get the ARN of the MFA device. After logging into the AWS Management Console, navigate to the IAM Console. In the IAM Console page, select the Users tab on the IAM Dashboard or from the left-hand panel. Select the IAM User. In the IAM User page, go to the Security Credentials tab and get the ARN of the assigned MFA device. I'm using virtual MFA device in this example. For a hardware MFA device, the value will be something like shown here. Now, let's use the AWS SDS Get Session Token command to get our temporary credentials. Let's go to the terminal. Let's make sure that we are running the latest of the AWS CLI by running the following command to check the version number against the AWS CLI documentation. After we verify that we are running the latest version of the AWS CLI, let's run the following command. Let's input the ARN of the MFA device retrieved earlier and the MFA token generated from the device. The JSON formatted output contains temporary credentials and expiration time, which by default is 12 hours, shown here in seconds. If you want to specify a different expression time, then add the dash dash duration dash seconds parameter in the STS get session token command. The value provided is in seconds. The range is from 900 seconds or 15 minutes to 129,600 seconds or 36 hours for an IAM user. Now that we have the temporary credentials, there are two ways we can use it. The first way is to export the values to the environment variables using the following commands. Another way to use these temporary credentials is by creating a name profile which is useful if you want only certain API calls to be MFA authenticated. To use these temporary credentials in, in a name profile, let's edit the credentials file in the hidden AWS folder located at the home user directory and add a new profile configuration. The profile configuration will look similar to this snippet. For this demo, let's use name profile to store my temporary credentials and name it MFA. Now let's see how we can use this to run AWS CLI commands that requires MFA authentication. Here I have three Amazon Simple Storage Service buckets in my account. The MFA only access bucket can be accessed only if my AWS CLI command is MFA authenticated. Let's see what happens if I try to list the files for that bucket without MFA authenticated credentials. As expected, we get access denied error. Let's try again to list the file within the bucket using the MFA name profile that has MFA authenticated credentials. As you can see, we can successfully list the files. Finally, remember that after these credentials expire, run the get session token API call again using the ARN of the MFA device and MFA token. Then, export the return values to the environment variables or to the name profile configuration. If you choose to set the environment variables, Make sure that you unset them before running the get session token call using the following command. 
It's a best practice that you run a script or a cron job in the background that checks for expiration from the output of get session token command and then prompts for a re-authentication. And now, you know how to use an MFA token to authenticate access to AWS resources through the AWS CLI with three steps. First, by getting the ARN of the MFA device. Then, by using the AWS SDS get session token command to get a temporary credentials. And finally, by calling the AWS CLI command with the temporary credentials. Thanks for watching and happy cloud computing from all of us here at AWS. <laughs>